So this is College Algebra, and we're now going to talk about polynomial and rational inequalities. Inequalities. So we're going back into the less than sign and the greater than sign. Now we've done this before, but what we've done is the linear inequalities. So in part B, the linear are when the x's are to the power of 1. Makes them linear, and those are real easy to do. But when we shift over such that we now are going to talk about the quadratic inequalities and the rational inequalities, this is a whole new game. Okay, this is really, really different. And what's required of me when I do this is this thing called a sign chart. These things called sign charts. And so the first time I create a sign chart for you, it's going to look really strange. And you're just going to kind of watch me go through it. And then the second time, it'll start making a little more sense. And the third time, you'll have it. But when we talk about a sign chart, it's going to be a chart that has pluses and minuses in it for positive and negatives. Okay. When we solve as in part C, here's a little bit of a procedure. You want to begin in step one by comparing to zero. So in our example below, we have a situation where we're comparing to zero. So you want it to either be greater than zero or equal to or less than zero, but you want to be comparing to zero. Then we're going to factor. Then we're going to find these things called critical values or critical numbers. And then we're going to create that sign chart, which will ultimately give me the solutions to the inequality. Now your solutions will be an interval. Okay, so your answer will be an interval of values that will satisfy the inequality. So your answer will be an interval notation. Your answer will be an interval notation. Okay, so here we go. Step one, compared to zero, it is compared to zero. Step two, factor this. Now I've taught you guys this kind of shortcut way of factoring which was to write this as an x plus something over 3, x plus something over 3. Then we build a table and we say 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. What two numbers multiply to be negative 12 and add to be negative 11? And that's just a negative 12 and a positive 1. So I put the negative 12 over the 3 and the positive 1 over the 3. Well, this first one is x minus 4. But the second one, the one-third, does not review, reduce, so we pull the 3 up in front of the x, making it 3x plus 1. So my first step is to factor it. So coming back over here, when I factor it, this becomes x minus 4 times 3x plus 1. Man, I can't get that 3 to write. 3x plus 1 greater than 0. Okay, so this is a pretty significant step in this process, and so I'm going to square it off. So what that's saying is the stuff on the left side needs to be greater than zero, meaning it needs to be positive. Okay, greater than zero means it needs to be positive. Okay, so now we factored. We need to find our critical values or what are called critical numbers, and so I'm going to come over here on the left side to come up with those critical values. And the way you get the critical values are you set each one of those factors equal to zero. Okay, you set each one of those factors in your inequality, you set each one equal to zero to come up with these critical values which we're going to use in our sign chart. So I come up with a value of a positive four and a value of a negative one third. <coughs> So now we're ready to create a sign chart. So I'm going to come over here on the right side again, and you're going to draw a number line. Don't get fancy with the number line, but you do want to put the number negative one-third and the four, your two critical values on this chart, making certain you've got the smaller number on the left side. Then in this chart, we're going to divide into to like three columns. Okay, I'm going to divide it into three columns like this. Now, going back to my inequality in the box, I'm going to put each of those binomials over here on the left side. Okay, 
So now what I do is I'm creating signs. I'm trying to figure out where is it positive and where is it negative. So I pick a test value to the region to the left of a negative one-third, maybe a negative 10, maybe a negative 100, something to the left, and usually the multiples of 10 are the easiest. And I'm going to take that number, that test point or test value of negative 10, and plug it into those two binomials. So I'm going to take negative 10 and plug it into x minus 4. It's going to be negative 10 minus 4, which is a negative 14, which is a negative value. Only signs go in the chart. If I put the negative 10 into the 3x plus 1, it'll be 3 times negative 10, which is a negative 30. And a negative 30 plus 1 is a negative 29, which is negative. So again, it's just the positive or the negative that goes in the chart. Now in my box, what I'm solving for is I want to know the sign of the product of these two binomials. I want to know, is that product positive or negative? Well, if I'm going to multiply them, I'm going to be taking a negative times a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive for the sign of the product of the two binomials. The negative times the negative is a positive result. Okay, so now let's go into the middle quadrant the middle column. Okay, in the middle column I need a test value. So between a negative and a positive number, zero is always a good choice. I'm going to go back to my two binomials and I'm going to put now my new test value in of zero. So plugging into the x minus four, zero minus four is negative four, which is negative. And plugging the zero into the three x plus one, three times zero plus one is a positive one, which is positive. Now, this column, I want to know the sign of the product. So a negative times a positive is a negative result. The negative times the positive is a negative result. Okay, the last column, something bigger than 4. Let's go to a positive 10. Plug it into these two binomials and determine if the result is a positive value or a negative value. Okay, 10 into x minus 4. 10 minus 4 is a positive 6. 10 into 3, 10 sub substituted into the 3x plus 1 would be 30 plus 1, which is a positive 31. Ultimately, I want to know the sign of the product, so a positive times a positive is a positive result for the product. That is my sign chart. It is full of signs. Okay, a bunch of signs in the sign chart. So now, coming back up to my box, my goal is to know where that product is positive. Well, that product is positive here and here, to the left of a negative one-third and to the right of a four. So this region is negative infinity to a negative one-third, and the region on the right would be four to infinity. We get both regions indicating solutions to my original quadratic inequality. And so this is my interval notation for the solutions to the quadratic inequality. Okay. Step one, make certain you're comparing to zero. Step two, factor. Step three, find critical values. Create your sign chart and then get your solutions written in interval notation. Okay, looks kind of weird. First time is a little bit shocking. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's try another one. Okay, first step, compare this thing to zero. So I've got to move the four over. So this is a three x squared plus x minus four less than or equal to zero. I have to start by comparing it to zero. This, I have to do this to start with. Now I need to factor it. Okay, and this is going to factor, for sake of time, into a 3x plus 4 times an x minus 1. So this is a very important step in my process because what that says is I want that product to be less than or equal to 0, which means I want that product to end up being negative. Okay, I'm looking for where the product will be negative, and that means that bottom row of my sign chart, where that bottom row is negative, will tell me the solutions. So now I come off to the side, and I find the critical values or the critical numbers necessary 
to create the sign chart. So I take each factor, the 3x plus 4, set it equal to 0, and the x minus 1 set equal to 0. And I solve these, and when I do, I get a negative 4 thirds, and I get a positive 1. These are the numbers used to create the sign chart. Okay, so now creating my sign chart. Be sure you put the smaller number on the left, which would be the negative value, and the positive value on the right, and then divide this into three columns. The more advanced you get, the more critical numbers you get, and you could have several columns here. Okay, but it's usually pretty quick. This is a one. This is not one of my dashes. This is my value of one right here. Okay, so now I have my, in my box, I have my 3x plus 4 as a factor and my x plus 1 as a factor. And ultimately, I want to know the sign of the product because ultimately I, know, I want to know where that product is negative. Okay, so to the left of a negative 4 thirds, I'm going to shoot for a negative 10. Plug it into my binomials. Okay, put a negative 10 into my 3x plus 4. That would be a negative 30 plus 4, which would be a negative 26, which is negative. And then I put the negative 10 into the x plus 1. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9, which is negative. Then I want to know the bottom rows. I want to know the sign of the product of the negative times the negative, which will be a positive result. Now my middle column, I'm going to pick a test value since it's between a negative and a positive number. Zero is a usually a very good value, quick and easy to use. Go to my first binomial, three times zero is zero, plus four is a positive four. My second binomial, zero plus one is a positive one. So I'm going to have a positive times a positive, which is ultimately a positive sign on that product. Okay, look into my third column, something to the right of a positive 1. Let's go for a 10. First binomial, 3 times 10 is 30, plus 4 is a positive 34. My second binomial, 10 plus 1 is a positive 11. And then I take the product, a positive times a positive is ultimately a positive. Uh, isn't the, uh, Something's not right. Isn't the x plus 1 supposed to be x minus 1? Ooh, thank you. Let me change that real quick. There we go. Well, I fixed that fast. Okay, so is that going to change my signs? Probably. Let's see what it's going to do. Okay, so what's it going to do? So, negative 10 is negative. Zero, this will be the negative right here, right? This one will be negative. So that changes the sign. And they don't always have to be alternating signs in the third row. Okay, they're not always alternating signs in the third row, so don't count on that. All right, so now that I have my sign chart right, I'm looking back up in the box. I'm looking for where the product is negative, and it's negative in the middle. So now where it is negative is between my critical value of a negative four-thirds and a positive one. Now, am I going to put parentheses on these values for my interval notation or square brackets? square brackets. That is correct because it's less than or equal to. So the equal to gives me the square bracket on that interval. Now you are already starting to feel it. You corrected me so you must be getting the feel of it now which is good. Okay so here's another example. Step one, compare to zero. So I've got to subtract the 15. So I'm going to have an x times x minus 2 minus 15 less than or equal to 0 because I must compare to 0. Okay, I must compare to 0. So once I've got it compared to 0, then the next step is to factor it. Well, I can't factor this. This is a total mess. So I need to go ahead and multiply this out, clean it up, before I can come in here and factor this into an x minus 5 times an x plus 3. There it is. Once it's factored compared to 0, this is the important information 
This is ultimately what we're looking for in the bottom row of our sign chart, which is where is this going to be negative? When will that product be negative? Okay, so I come over here on the side and I find my critical values. All right, x minus 5 equaling 0, x plus 3 equaling 0. I get a critical value of a positive 5 and another critical value of a negative 3. That's what goes into my sign chart. A positive 5 and a negative 3. This is what you're going to divide the quadrants or the columns of your sign chart into. And then you put your two factors, your binomials of the x minus 5 and the x plus 3. And ultimately you want to know the sign of their product. Okay, pick a test value to the left of negative 3, maybe a negative 10. First binomial, negative 10 minus 5 is a negative 15, which is negative. Second binomial, negative 10 plus 3 is a negative 7, which is negative. So what is the sign of the product in the bottom row? Positive. positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, pick a number between a negative 3 and a positive 5. 0 is a good one to use. First binomial, 0 minus 5 is a negative 5. Second binomial, 0 plus 3 is a positive 3. When you multiply the negative times the positive, you get negative. Third column, greater than 5, 10, 20, 100, whatever you want. 10 is just nice and easy. First binomial, 10 minus 5 is a positive 5. Second binomial, 10 plus 3 is a positive 13. And a positive times a positive is a positive result for the product. Now remember, over in the box, we want the product to know where the product is negative, less than or equal to. So the answer here will be between your negative 3 and your positive 5. And is it closed square brackets or is it parentheses? Square brackets. This is your solution. Okay, that is your solution. Those are the values that would satisfy the original inequality. Now part B here, notice it's the very same setup, but this time they're using a greater than sign, right? This is the same question, but the greater than sign would be positive, right? So going back to my sign chart, what would be the answer to part B? Where is it positive? From negative infinity to negative 3, square bracket it, in union with 5 to infinity. That's where I am positive in the third row of my sign chart. Those regions, those values are where it's going to be positive for part B. Now, why in the world is this graph sitting here? Well, when you have a negative result, this means that the graph is under the x-axis. Okay, it means that when you actually graph it, it would be under the x-axis. So look at this graph of the original quadratic. Here's your value of negative 3. And here's your value of 5. We are under the x-axis, or we are negative, between a negative 3 and a positive 5. Now in part B, it wants to know where is it positive. That would mean above the x-axis, right? The graph is above the x-axis in the region to the left of negative 3. It's above it. And in the region to the right of the positive 5, it's above it which is why we get those two intervals. So when it's negative, it's under the x-axis. When it's positive, it's above the x-axis. Pretty neat comparison there.
Okay, so let's look at this next one. We also have a graph that we can kind of look at to, to finalize or to put all this information together. This is already factored and it's already compared to zero. Okay, so we're sitting in a nice position, already factored, already compared to zero. So this is like my box. Greater than zero means positive. All right, so I need to come up with critical values. So I have x minus 2. I got this 3 twice, don't I? x minus 2 and then x plus 3 equaling 0. So I'm going to get an x value of 2. Well, that's repeated, but whatever. And then an x value of negative 3 as my critical values going into my sign chart. So I don't put the 2 in there twice. There's no logic in that. But I'm going to come over here now and create my sign chart. I'm going to put the negative 3 and the positive 2. And I'm going to create these little columns. Okay, now what is interesting is it's x minus 2 squared. Really, this is x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 3 greater than 0. So I need to write that x minus 2 twice over here when creating my sign chart because I have to multiply two times. If they're both negative, it's going to change it to a positive. I have to put them both in there. And then ultimately, I want to know the sign of the product of all three of them this time. Of all three of them. Okay, so to the left of a negative 3, I'm going to try a negative 10. That's always easy. Negative 10. Negative 10 minus 2 is a negative 12, which is negative. Again, it'll be negative 12 on the second row. And on the third row, a negative 10 plus 3 is a negative 7. So three negatives. A negative times a negative times a negative is negative. negative. Okay, in the middle, try 0. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. 0 plus 3 is a positive 3. A negative times a negative times a positive is positive. Test point to the left of 2, probably 10. First binomial, 10 minus 2 is positive 8. 10 minus 2 again is positive 8. And 10 plus 3 is positive 13. So you can see the signs did not alter here. So don't count on those signs altering in the third row. Very careful. So they asked me in the question, where is it positive? Well, it's positive here and here, right? Is it positive at 2 or is it equal to 0 at the critical value of 2? It's equal. So it's not greater than 0 at 2. So we don't get to have the 2. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say, hang on, do I get to have the negative 3? No. So it's going to be negative 3 to 2 in union with 2 to infinity. You don't get to have the 2 because the 2 is where it's equal to 0, not greater than 0. Now in part B, it wants to know where it's negative. Where is it negative? Look in your sign chart. Where is it negative? Negative infinity to what? Negative 3. Is that a square bracket or an open? Look at the inequality. There you go. It's less than or equal to, and the equal to part says, oh, oh, this time you do use the end value of the negative 3. Okay. So now I'm going to look at the graph of this function where it's negative, which was in part B, right? Neg well, I shouldn't have been pointing. Hold on. I shouldn't have done that. That doesn't exactly what I want up here. Okay. Negative means from the graphical perspective under the x-axis. Is my graph under the x-axis between negative infinity and negative 3? Sure is. Up here where it was positive, and I could have written the answer up here. I guess I will write the answer here. 
which was a negative 3 to 2 in union with a 2 to infinity. I don't know how I fit that in there. Where it's positive, that's where it should be above the x-axis. Is it above the x-axis from negative 3 to negative 2 and then 2 to infinity? Sure is. It's on the x-axis at 2, which is why I can't put a square bracket on the 2. But it's above it between negative 3 and 2 and then again from 2 to infinity. So you can see the graphical perspective in addition to how it complements actually your sign chart. All right, so let's look at this crazy thing. They give me the graph. Let's don't do it algebraically. Let's just look at the graph. Where is it less than or equal to zero? Where is this graph under the x-axis? Never. But the equal part lets it be equal, right? Where is it actually equal? At one value, which is what? Two and a half. So it's one value. 2.5. Lovely. Okay, so part B is just where is it under, which is never, right? This isn't happening. So this is empty set. And then part C, where is it greater than, which would be above the x-axis? Where is that? Everywhere except where? Everywhere but exactly at the value 2.5. So this would be your negative infinity to 2.5 and then your 2.5 to infinity. So absolutely everywhere except exactly at that value 2.5. <clears throat> and I bet you this empty set is going to be in set notation like this. <clears throat> y'all got that really well. Very impressive that y'all got that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it isn't equal to. Thank you. So what should I do? Everything. If it's everything, what do I do? If it's everything. Woohoo! Above x-axis or, I hate to say equal to or on. If I put that, that won't make any sense. Equal is like on the x-axis? I'm not sure how to say that. Okay, got more of it here. Okay, so how are we doing on time? Well, we're actually doing good. Okay, good. Okay, transition. <laughs> transition. Okay, so this transition now, this difference here is now we're talking about rationals. Remember what a rational is? It's the fractions, the polynomial fractions, the ugly stuff. And we're going to treat them just almost the same way. So the first thing we're going to do is compare it to zero, and this one is not being compared to zero, so I have to subtract four. So this becomes six over x minus three minus four, and leave a little space, less than or equal to zero. Leave a little space there. Now I've got to add these together, and I can't add them together unless they have the same denominator. So if you have a pen color that you can change to, this would be a nice time to use it. I'm going to multiply this times x minus 3 over x minus 3 so that now both fractions have the same denominator. So with the same denominator I can put them together which makes this a 6 minus 4 times x minus 3 less than or equal to 0. So this becomes 6 minus 4x plus 12 over x minus 3 less than or equal to 0, which is ultimately a negative 4x plus 18 over x minus 3 less than or equal to 0. There it is. Okay, I'm having to write kind of small to fit it in, but that is four, negative 4x plus 18 over x minus 3 less than or equal to 0. Okay, so there it is. So I, I can't stay on the pattern and put my critical values on the left side, so I'm going to have to come back up here now, okay? My critical values. Now when you find your critical values of a rational, you find them for the numerator and for the denominator. 
Okay, the critical values are for the numerator and the denominator. So this will be a negative 4x equaling a negative 18, or x equaling 18 fourths, which is what 9 has. And this one will be x equaling 3, but on this one I'm going to be very careful. Be careful with this 3. It cannot be a solution. Why can it not be a solution? That's right. It makes that denominator equal 0, which makes the whole thing undefined. Okay? So don't ever put a square bracket on the 3. Okay? Do not put a square bracket on the 3. Okay, so when I create the sign chart, I'm going to have 9 halves, which is what, 4 and a half? So 3 is less than the 9 halves, okay? 3 is to the left of the 9 halves. Okay, so here we go. Create your columns. Pick the, now you're going to have the numerator, which is a negative 4x plus 18. You're going to have the denominator, x minus 3, and ultimately the sign of the rational itself. Okay, ultimately the sign of the rational itself. Okay, let's pick a test value, say negative 10. Negative 4 times negative 10 is positive 40 plus 18 is positive. Negative 10 minus 3 is a negative 13. So the fraction is what? Negative. Positive over a negative is a negative. Okay, in the middle between three and four and a half. Four. <laughs> right? Nine halves is four and a half, so pick four. Okay, negative four times four is a negative sixteen plus eighteen is a positive two. Four minus three is a positive one, so positive over positive is positive. Okay, nine halves, pick ten. Okay, negative 4 times 10 is negative 40 plus 18, which is negative. And 10 minus 3 is a positive 7, so a negative over a positive is negative. Now, in our box, the goal is to find out where this thing is negative or equal to 0. So it's here and here. So I'm between negative infinity and 3. And then I'm between 9 halves and infinity. Now be careful. It's a less than or equal to, but I'm going to put the square bracket on the 9 halves, but not on the 3. Why do I not put it on the 3? Makes it undefined. Very good. There it is. There's your solutions. So it's very similar to just the quadratics, but you just have to be careful with the denominator critical values from the denominator. Okay, let's try another one. I have to compare to zero. So this is 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 3 minus 4, give yourself some space, less than zero. Okay, in that space, I'm going to change pen color, and I've got to have a denominator of 2x minus 3. So I multiply it times 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 3. Because I've got to combine them into one rational expression compared to 0. So this becomes, in the denominator, 2x minus 3. And this is what? This is an 8x. When you distribute the 4, actually it would be a negative 8x plus 12, right? When you distribute a negative 4. So 3x minus 8x is a negative 5x, and 1 plus 12 is 13. So just trying to save a little space and a little time, 3x minus 8x is a negative 5x, and 1 plus 12 is 13. So this is the all-important box. We're talking about where is this thing negative less than zero is negative. So what are my critical values? And sometimes you'll see them called critical values CVs. Okay, if you ever see them use the acronym CV, that's what this is. 
Okay, so I take the negative 5x plus 13, I set it equal to 0, and x will equal 13 fifths. Then I have 2x minus 3 equaling 0, and x will equal 3 halves. Be careful with the 3 halves. because that is what causes the denominator to equal zero. Okay, sign chart. Uh, 13 fifths is what, two and two fifths? So it's the bigger number. Okay, so we have a three halves and we have a 13 fifths. All right, so we're looking at our uh, I don't have a lot of space. We're looking at our negative 5x plus 13, and we're looking at our 2x minus 3, and I still need to move it to the left a little bit. I didn't leave a lot of space for my signs to go in here. So I'm over here a little further. Negative 5x plus 13, and 2x minus 3, and ultimately, the sign of the ratio or the fraction of those two polynomials. Okay, here we go. To the left of one and a half, zero. Negative five times zero is zero plus 13 is positive. Two times zero is zero minus three, which is negative. So their ratio is what? Negative. Okay, between one and a half and two and a half, let's pick two. Negative five times two is negative 10 plus 13 is a positive three. Two times two is four minus three is a positive one. Their ratio is positive. To the right, pick a big number like 10. Negative five times 10 is negative 50 plus 13, which is negative. Two times 10 is 20 minus three, which is positive, so this is negative. Okay, my answer is looking for the negative regions. So I'm in here to the left of 3 halves and to the right of 13 fifths. So this is negative infinity to 3 halves. And since it's less than, not less than, or equal to, these are all open parentheses. And then 13 fifths to infinity. like you're feeling confident, which is wonderful. Really good. Just real quick, let me get started on this one. I know we're gonna, we've got about five minutes left. We might not finish it, but let me kind of help you get the start. This is going to be 3 over 2x minus 1 and leave space, plus 4 over x and leave space compared to 0. Okay, I left a lot of space next to each of these fractions or rationals. Because my new denominator needs to be x, uh, uh, uh. I don't know what that is, whatever. Just don't want that. Okay. Oh dear, maybe I have to hit it. Okay. So, I need my new denominator to be x times 2x minus 1. Okay. So the left fraction, changing my pen color, I'm going to have to multiply it times x over x to get the x times 2x minus 1. And the right fraction's got to be multiplied times 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 to get both of those denominators to say x times 2x minus 1. Now my numerators are going to be 3x on the left plus distributing the 4, 8x minus 4. So ultimately, this is 11x minus 4 over, and don't multiply that, leave it factored, because you need the factored version inside your sign chart. Do not multiply that, leave it factored. For some reason, I know there's a desire to do the multiplication, but don't. Hold it there. Do not start multiplying stuff, because those are what are feeding your sign chart. So you're looking for negative or equal to zero. Okay, so your critical values, like I said, sometimes they'll call them CVs. 
you'll take your 11x minus 4 equal to 0, your x equal to 0, and your 2x minus 1 equal to 0. So you'll get a 4 elevenths, a 0, and a 1 half. 4 elevenths is less than a half. These numbers are extremely close to each other, right? Unless y'all see any mistakes that I've made anywhere. Okay, so we're going to have a 0, then we're going to have 4 elevenths, and then we're going to have 1 half. And you know what? You might have to turn to decimal values in this thing. Okay, which I think I'm going to. So I'm jumping real quick to my calculator, and I'm taking 4 and dividing it by 11, and I'm getting a, this is 0.36, and we know this to be 0.5. Okay, so we have an 11x minus 4, we have x, and we have 2x minus 1. Ultimately, I want to know the sine of 11x minus 4 over x times 2x minus 1. Okay, to the left of 0, this is easy, negative 10. 11 times a negative 10 is a negative 110 minus 4, which is definitely negative. When x is negative 10, it is negative. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20 minus 1 is a negative 21. This is now a negative over a negative times a negative, right? A negative over a negative times a negative, which is a negative over a positive, which is negative, correct? Okay. So in here, you might have to pick something like 0.2 as your test value. Okay, 0.2 as a test value. So this would be 2.2 minus 4, which is negative. 0.2 is positive. 2 times 0.2 is 0.4 minus 1, which is negative. Okay, you got a negative over a positive times a negative. There you go. Okay, so now you want to probably pick a point like 0.4. Okay, 0.4. Okay, 11 times 0 0.4 is 4.4, and 4.4 minus 4 is a positive 0 0.1. 0 0.4 is positive, so x is positive. Then 2 times 0 0.4 is going to be 0 0.8, and 0 0.8 minus 1 will be negative. A positive over a positive times a negative is a positive over a negative, which is negative. Then out here, pick some convenient number, 10. 110 minus 4 is positive, 10 is positive, and 20 minus 1 is positive. Ultimately, a positive result for the fraction. We're looking where this is negative, which is here and here. So we're looking at negative infinity to 0. I'm careful about closing anything right now. And 4 elevenths to 1 half. Okay. When x is 0, I cannot have that because that makes the rational equal to 0. So that's definitely a parenthesis. 4 elevenths was the numerator, so it is a keeper. 1 half causes the denominator to be 0, so I do not get to have it. This is your solution regions for that original, pretty complex, rational inequality. That should have you ready to roll.